Hello, I'm Ebere Ajagu with today's edition of Insight, and we are reaching you from the Lagos studio of Voice of Nigeria. The fight to reduce corruption to the minimum is a key agenda of Nigeria's government. The presidency, various anti graft agency, and other arms of the executive have been championing the fight, especially in the last 16 months. The reason why the elite in different countries of the world decide to fight corruption is quite straightforward. The society itself is saved from a breakdown of law and order. But how well has the judiciary performed in supporting the fight to rid Nigeria of corruption? If we don't put the judiciary right, if we don't have a judiciary in which we have confidence, then we have no government and we have no democracy. And how about the legislature? an arm capable of reviewing and passing laws needed for the success of the anti-graft fight. The clear impression is created that Nigerian legislators are in office for themselves and not for the populace. A corrupt and self-seeking legislature will not have the credibility and authority to carry out its role as a watchdog of the people. Answers to those questions are what we'll attempt to provide on today's edition of Insight. The security of Nigeria's territory, fight against corruption and the restoration and diversification of the economy. Those were the three pillars on which President Muhammad Buhari campaigned when he sought Nigeria's top job. The fight to significantly reduce corruption has the president's attention so much that he says, if Nigeria does not kill corruption, corruption will kill Nigeria. That official hatred for corruption, which has robbed Africa's most populous country of development and has obvious effects on all aspects of life, was what Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo expressed when he addressed participants at a lecture on the role of the legislature in the fight against this scourge. For the majority of our citizens, the greed and mindless selfishness that attends corruption is bewildering. How do you explain how anyone can embezzle funds meant to equip soldiers for a war that could consume thousands and eventually even all of us? Or how in the midst of so much want can some seize the treasury for themselves, their family and their friends? And how can anyone argue after all of that that all that is required and all that we need pay attention to is the technicality of how such people are possibly arrested. The fuel subsidy scam consumed almost 5 trillion naira. When you consider that the last year's budget was 6 trillion in size, the scale of the damage is clear. So I'm sure that we all agree that there is no point bringing together this most distinguished, erudite, and knowledgeable group for an intellectual exigencies of the etiology and consequences of corruption. Indeed, a conference on corruption in which the arms of government are invited can, in my view, have one objective and one objective alone, which is, what is the way out of this existential evil? The seriousness of corruption as a problem in Nigeria becomes understandable when you look through the 2015 Global Corruption Index. The report by Transparency International ranks Nigeria as their 136th least corrupt country in the 175 surveyed. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Independent Corrupt Practices Commission and Code of Conduct Bureau and Tribunal, all agencies of the executive continue to investigate and charge to court individuals and organizations alleged to have stolen state funds running into billions of dollars. The disposition of the two other arms, the judiciary and legislature, observers say has been rather sluggish and lukewarm, forcing President Buhari to label the court's obstacles in the anti-graft fight. Late on October 7, the Department of State Service, Nigeria's secret police, raided the homes of judges who said were corrupt and arrested seven of them. 
Vice President Oshimbaje told participants at the lecture on the fight against corruption that the judiciary was an arm of government where corruption must not be allowed to take root. We give power to adjudicate on our lives and livelihoods to the fairest and most honest amongst us, who is called a judge. Otherwise, law and justice will serve only the strongest and the richest. So the reason why the elite in different countries of the world decide to fight corruption is quite straightforward. First, it protects even the elite itself from being consumed by the chaos and conflict that corruption may cause. But more importantly, the society itself is saved from a breakdown of law and order. Last year, President Buhari set up an advisory committee on anti-corruption. That committee submitted its report on Monday, October 17, the day before it joined the Parliament or the National Assembly and the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime to organize the lecture on the role of the legislature in the fight against corruption. Committee Chairman Professor Itesege labeled corruption by judicial officers a crime against humanity. We need the judiciary, but we need an upright judiciary. Without that, one arm of government would collapse. Democracy would collapse. Let us think of the implication of what's going on. So if we don't put the judiciary right, if we don't have a judiciary in which we have confidence, a judiciary with, a judiciary with integrity and honor, a judiciary with moral authority, then we have no government and we have no democracy. The judicial arm is the last source of hope of justice for citizens in every democracy. Observers say public confidence in Nigeria's court is, however, currently at its lowest. But public opinion of the legislature ranks it as the most corrupt and the least likely of the three arms to support any efforts to rid Nigeria of the scourge. The National Assembly, it was, which passed the law which created the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission in 2000 and that of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission four years later to investigate and prosecute allegations of economic and financial crimes and other forms of corruption in the public and private sectors. Analysts and critics now say the current set of federal lawmakers is not as committed to the fight against corruption. They attributed their claims to the failure of the lawmakers to disclose how much they earn as salaries and allowances and collect for their controversial execution of projects in their constituencies as well as make public the annual budget of both the Senate and House of Representatives. Professor Sege puts the negative perception of the National Assembly in proper perspective. The current law esteem in which the legislature, particularly the National Assembly, is held, arises not from lack of legislative primacy, but by its exhibition of negative values and practices grossly against the interests of Nigeria and Nigerians. The clear impression is created that Nigerian legislators are in office for themselves and not for the populace. The issue of mind-boggling allowances is just one evidence of this phenomenon. A corrupt and self-seeking legislature will not have the credibility and authority to carry out its role as a watchdog of the people. In my humble view, our legislature has not lived up to expectations with regard to its oversight. It has tended to be deeply involved in acts which deprive it of the capacity to fight corruption. The latest development of budget padding is an example of this dilemma. Perhaps this negative perception is what the parliament set out to correct when it agreed to join the Presidential Advisory Committee on Anti-Corruption and the UN Office on Drugs and Crime to organize the lecture on the role of the legislature in the fight against corruption. Mr. Jide Akinloye was instrumental in the House role in organizing the lecture. If we are to secure the future of our nation, from becoming a banana republic or a country where anything goes. We must all rise together to put an end to the scourge of corruption and financial recklessness. This was the mindset when we, the National Assembly, decided to organize this conference. 
to say it is time we all come together to confront corruption in our nation. Nigeria, seen as the leading light in Africa, must develop a new culture and demonstrate the willingness to fight corruption. The keynote speaker at the lecture and director general of the Law School of Kenya, Professor Patrick Lumumba, said Africa will not rise and take its proper place on the global scene until Nigeria curbs corruption. According to him, Nigeria's political class need to draw from the commitment of the leaders in Rwanda, Mauritius, Botswana and other African countries who have demonstrated that corruption can be fought. If he's a Nigerian for five years, will earn no more than 30 million naira. He's prepared to spend one billion naira to go into public office. There must be something that they see that we, the electorate, do not see. And that thing is the ability and the opportunity to privatize public wealth. The day we introduce hygiene in our politics, the day we deal with the financing of our politics, that is the day that we will begin to sanitize our country. And that is the day that Nigeria will begin to be a great country. Professor Lumumba addressed the lawmakers on what it will take to make laws that will tackle the graft. We must also as a country look at the lifestyle of the individuals who engage in public office. How is it that in Africa, when an individual whom we knew to be a pauper is appointed as a public official, on whom we knew to be a pauper is elected, permit me and forgive me at once, members of Senate and members of the House of Representatives, that no sooner have you set foot in the Senate or the House of Representatives, then you become a millionaire and you begin to live as if money was not a problem. If it was so easy, why aren't all of us so rich? The foremost African anti-corruption crusader advocated the support of institutions in Nigeria for President Buhari's anti-corruption war. You are President Muhammadu Buhari is on the right path. He has given us a clarion call. He is now recognized the world over as one of the chief fighters against corruption. But I can tell you that no matter how well intentioned he is, he is not going to succeed unless you support him as the legislators. He is not going to succeed unless the institutions are strengthened. And in any event, the maximum he can stay in office is two terms. And let me tell you one thing about those who engage in graft. They have the patience that is amazing. If they can sleep quietly for eight years, only to emerge as greater monsters in the ninth year. And therefore, what we must do is to create institutions that defy time. Nigeria's anti-corruption fight needs the collective involvement of the executive, legislative and judicial arms as well as the citizens to successfully reduce corruption to the minimum. That's it on today's edition of Insight. The program was produced by Ayola Efunkoya. I am Ebere Aja.